welcome to Conversations with STEM, the channel that helps you talk and learn with your children about science, technology, engineering, and math. I'm Molly, and in this video, we'll be analyzing and interpreting data as we experiment with a glow stick. Start by having your child observe the setup of the experiment. For this experiment, we have a glow stick that's already been mixed, a cup of hot water, a cup of cold water, and a cup with no water as a room temperature control. The data we're going to be trying to make sense of is the brightness of the glow stick as we move it back and forth between the different cups. Have your child observe the glow stick in the control cup and notice its properties. What did they observe about the glow stick? And at this point, anything they notice is really great. It's important to notice every detail that could potentially be important in an experiment. The detail we do want to make sure we focus on is noticing how brightly the glow stick is glowing. If your child doesn't notice that detail on their own, ask them, is it glowing? If they agree that it's glowing and they don't volunteer any more information, you could ask them, is the glow stick very bright, very dim, or somewhere in the middle? The brightness of the glow stick is going to be what changes throughout the experiment, so we want to make sure that the original brightness has been noted as a potentially important detail. If you're new to guiding science conversations, the question of brightness should be asked before you move on in the video, but it doesn't have to be the first detail you pay attention to. Let your child make observations organically and see where their focus goes. We can always redirect later if we need to. Have your child consider what might happen to the glow stick if it's placed in the cup of hot water. Listen to the understandings they're pulling from. What information are they using to base their prediction on? Noting the connections they make can help us build on those connections in future learning, as well as listen for misconceptions that may need to be addressed and corrected. they should have noticed that it got brighter. We want to start with observations because this is our data that we're going to use to drive our understanding forward. Now that we have the observation that the glow stick got brighter, we can begin to interpret what that data might mean. We want to guide the conversation to the molecules moving around inside the glow stick. Have your child consider the information at the beginning of the video that the glow stick glows because molecules of the liquids inside are bumping into each other and creating a chemical reaction. When the glow stick was placed in the hot water, what might have happened to the molecules? Do they think heat might make the molecules move around faster or slower? Before moving on in the video, ask your child what data they would want or what information they would like to know or see. Having children determine what data would help during an explanation helps them to determine what the important data to consider might actually be. If you wanted to set up this experiment yourself to do with your child, this would be a good way to move into a different practice, such as planning and carrying out investigations. The data needed to explain an experiment can drive the way an investigation is set up, and will cause discussion of variables and controls as children determine how to get the data they need to construct an explanation. Now we want to make a prediction based on the data we've collected. This will help us test to see if we're interpreting the data accurately. Ask your child what might happen to the glow stick if it's placed in cold water. All of the practices flow into each other. Analyzing and interpreting data can't really be pulled out on its own as some of the other practices, such as asking questions can be, because if we remove the data completely from the question we're asking, we decontextualize it. And data is really only useful when it's meaningful, when we're using it to answer a question or construct an explanation. Anytime you're analyzing and interpreting data, another practice needs to come along for the ride. In this case, we're using constructing explanations. This question also shows how the different dimensions of the next generation science standards fit together, because in this case, we also want children to notice the cross-cutting concept of patterns. We want the child to consider if there's a pattern that could hold true. If hot water makes the glow stick brighter, and we know that cold water is the opposite of hot water, could cold water make the glow stick dimmer?
out what happened to the glow stick. We want to anchor them in the data they've collected before jumping into the explanation of why that might have happened. This data will also become more evidence that can strengthen or revise an explanation. Your child should have observed the glow stick slowly dim as it sat in the cold water. Now we can use this data to strengthen our explanation. How does this data help us explain what's happening to the molecules reacting inside the glow stick? Have your child add to their explanation, using what they know about the chemical reaction happening, the data from the hot and cold water, as evidence. We're trying to figure out what this data means. Consistency is crucial in experimentation. Any experiment should be tried multiple times to ensure the results are consistent. Have your child make a prediction about what will happen if the experiment was repeated. Then, watch what happens in the second round of experimentation. Is the data reliable? When repeating the same procedure, do we get the same outcome? consider what other data they would want to collect in order to explain what's happening with the glow stick. How would they want to collect that data? Once they've identified other data that could be important, you might notice that they could move into the practice of planning and carrying out an investigation, which will then give them more data to analyze. So what's going on with this glow stick? A glow stick contains two liquids that we mix together when we crack and shake it. The particles, or molecules, of the liquids bump into each other as they're mixed, and as they connect with each other, they create a chemical reaction and give off light energy as a result. When the glow stick is placed in the hot water, the heat energy from the water is transferred to the molecules inside the glow stick. The added energy makes the molecules speed up, which causes them to bump into each other more frequently, speeding up the chemical reaction and increasing the amount of light energy being given off. When the glow stick is placed in the cold water, the opposite happens. The energy inside the molecules of the glow stick is transferred away into the cold water. This means the molecules inside the glow stick slow down, bumping into each other less frequently and slowing down the rate of reaction. This decreases the amount of light energy being given off. I hope this video helped you to have a conversation with your child. To continue the conversation, visit the Conversations with STEM website at the link in the description box below for a simple activity on how temperature can affect how matter moves. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next Monday for another Conversation with STEM.